Hi everyone, welcome. This is Carrie Hope Ministries. I'm Crystal. This is Mark, and we are so glad that you're joining us tonight. Um, if you are watching us during the live portion, would you please say hello so at the end we can say hello back to you. I'm so glad you're with me tonight and Thank returning you. as my co-host. It just wasn't the same last week as people could point out. They just what they just ain't the same when you're oh. not here. So it's, we're glad you are here. Tell Crystal okay. you're glad that she's back. Uh, we did have a tough time with some health issues last week, but it's good to be back with you, both of us together. We're going to be looking in John chapter 3. And of course, if you know your Bible at all, that is probably the chapter that is, I, I actually can't take credit for this. I read this today, that it's probably the chapter that is most needed when someone is actually just about to meet the Lord, oh. because it includes John three sixteen. Most I of us see. know it. And it also talks about some necessities in order to make it into the kingdom of God, which Jesus is going to speak about here in just a second. So get your Bible, look with us in John chapter 3 as we continue our study of the gospel of John. We're going to go through verse 21 tonight as we study what I like to call as Nick at night. I know I've used that before, <laughs> but it's just so clever and so easy to remember. So get your Bible and look along with us. We are, of course, Cary Hope Ministries, and we're a product of Gold Hill Wesleyan Church. If you don't have a church home, we would love for you to join us. We're located on Liberty Road, one mile off of Highway 52 in Gold Hill, just in the eastern part of Rowan County, outside of Salisbury. We have worship at 10 o'clock. We usually join our worship service on Facebook Live at 10.15. Then prayer time Sunday night at 6 o'clock. And Thursday, we're back for another edition of Carry Hope Ministries. You can catch our ministries usually live on our YouTube channel, or you can go back and watch any of them uh, on our excuse me, on our Facebook channel, and I, I should have said that first, you can go back and look at any of them on our YouTube channel later at Real Gold Hill. We can only post things on our Facebook channel for 30 days, but then we uh, also upload them. I think I said we had over 300. We actually have right at 300 videos now on our YouTube channel. As I said before, this is Nick at Night, beginning with John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. Let's look at them together, shall we? It says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council, maybe Sanhedrin in there, inferred there, he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. So let's take just a, a quick pause there for just a second, and I'm going to invite Crystal to come back in here with me. <laughs> We're going to talk about a couple of things right away. The title of our, our message tonight and the exploration of what we've seen already in the scriptures tells us that Nicodemus came when? He came at night. Came at night. <laughs> now, why would he come at night? Well, maybe he didn't want anyone else who was part of the ruling council to know that he was going to see Jesus because the rest of them didn't really know who this Jesus person was. So maybe he was... he. He wanted to know. He or they may have searching. known and he may have heard a little backstabbing within might the council have, of St. Hadrian. Mm -hmm. I want you to think for just a second about something. We're not told exactly where this takes place. Some people might believe it takes place in Jerusalem simply because he is a very important Pharisee, Nicodemus is. Uh, it could have taken place. But one thing we need to do is put ourselves in that setting. It's hard for us to not, today, tonight, whenever, in the West to think of ourselves in a city back when Jesus walked the earth without electricity of any sort oh, yeah. and think of how dark it would be at night. And the only light, I mean, you could have had, as you, you know, we talked a little bit about this uh, earlier today, you may have had some lighting at the temple, uh, very possible because the temple was standing. It may have been during a celebration that Jesus had come yeah. in. We don't know. Uh, but nevertheless, we have this circumstance where, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, in the last chapter, it did say that there was a celebration. So he could still be there 
from the from the previous celebration. We did or during the yeah, time of the celebration. True. So let's say that. But I want to emphasize that at night it is very dark. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the stars in the sky. If it weren't if it were cloudy, it would be very hard to see someone. I think back to when I was a child and we used to my grandparents used to live on Statesville Boulevard and they had a screened in porch. And I remember my grandfather used to love to sit out on the screen in porch at night. And we would hear the crickets and so forth. But I tell you, the, the room itself was no longer than, say, 10 feet from one end to the other. And you could not see the other person. You know, and, and I mean, there were, there was even some street lights emanating from some areas. And you still couldn't see. So it's dark. I want you to understand when somebody goes to visit someone at night, it's dark. They probably are meeting on a rooftop. Because inside of the, the houses themselves, unless there's a lot of candles, you know, you're really in trouble. So, yes, we have him coming at night, very possibly indiscreetly, to talk to right. Jesus. Another thing we point out here, even though John's gospel doesn't mention a lot of it, is that he says no one could, could you know, you have, God has to be with you because no one could perform the miraculous signs. Right. The only proof we've had of any description of a miraculous sign was the marriage at Cana. So we don't know if this is what he's heard about, but last week we did mention very briefly that he did perform some miraculous signs. One of the first ones that the Gospel of Mark tells us about is when he spoke in the synagogue, a man who was possessed by a demon came forward and he cast the demon out. So that's very possible yeah. that he could have heard of that, maybe not witnessed it eye to eye, but he did hear some things and he did come to see this fellow. Now, another thing, is, and we're going to talk about this at the end also, but Jesus is hitting him with a really tough reality, something that Nicodemus has never heard before. What is that? That he must be born again. <laughs> you must be born again. This flabbergasts Nicodemus, who is obviously a well-taught man of the scriptures. He's never heard this. Scholars theorize that one of the reasons is because Israel in general at this time, particularly those who knew the scriptures and the prophets, have believed that all the prophecy has been fulfilled as far as the reestablishment of Israel at this point, uh -huh. and they are just waiting for Messiah to take the throne. So they are kind of believing that, just as John the Baptist also had to broach the topic whenever he spoke, that they are, as the nation of Israel, redeemed. They are in the Holy Land, and therefore they are saved, as they are. Yeah. So Jesus talks about, no, 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 you must be born again. This blows him away. He's never thought of it. And he says, well, you can't go back into your mom and be born a second time. And Jesus is sitting there saying, no, no, no. And he talks about flesh giving birth to flesh, saying, look, it's just... This crude matter, and you're relying on it for your salvation. You and people like you, Nicodemus, think that just if you're born in the line of Abraham, just because you're a Jew, and he's saying it doesn't have to do with that, it has to do with spirit. And then he talks about something that, uh, you know, some people talk, and we'll talk about it here in a second, but water. And a lot of people will talk about how this means baptism. I don't think it does. I think it means the birth sack. I think it means actually the fact that you're born of water. Okay. And so I think, I don't necessarily think, now I'm not going to argue the point because I don't really know. But when he's talking about flesh giving birth to flesh, then that makes sense. Water, being born of the water and then born of the spirit. Because I don't see Jesus bringing in but two ar arguments here. Mm -hmm. Flesh and the spirit. So let's continue, and I'll get you back in here just a second when he says, you must be born again. All right, we continue. Very important pro uh, aspect of the, the sermon here, and something that I think is very difficult to understand and comprehend if you don't think about what we've just said. Jesus continues, he says, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. Isn't that true? So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. Now, you are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things, not just the wind, but also the what he just talked about, being born again. He's thinking, look, if you know the prophets, you should know this. I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. 
But still you people, probably the Jewish ruling class, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, anyone holding on to the Mosaic law, do not accept our testimony. Whose testimony? Jesus' is the disciples, the new movement that's following Christ. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And then this beautiful verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. So Chris will come back in here for just a second. Let's talk about what he said here. He comes out with this reality, you must be born again. What do you, in layman's terms, think that he means when we say that? It's pretty simple. We say it all the time in the church. You must well, be born we say, again. Well, in the church today, we say it means you must be saved. Yes. Yeah. And, and what is that? Let's give them a few steps. If you're going to be saved, then you're going to... Well, you're going to confess that you're a sinner. You're going to accept Jesus' payment on the cross as payment for your sin. Yeah. Um, There's an act of repentance there. Oh, yeah. You're crying out to him to be saved. You know that your condition is hopeless. Right. And you have to take his sacrifice. And this is what he's talking about. And I love the fact that he kind of puts it in there. You mean you are Israel's teacher and you don't know these things. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to speak for just a second about the wind. And we'll review it at the end of the, today's session. Whenever he talks of the wind, I used to always get puzzled at that. I used to think, what is Jesus talking about? You know, it's just like, I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. And then what the wind, what's that got to do with anything? Well, again, doing some research, uh, some scholars believe that Jesus is saying, look, and, and we say this too, because I thought it was so ironic what, what they said he was saying. He's saying, Nicodemus, you don't have to figure it all out. You, some of it is by faith. The wind comes and blows wherever it's going to, and you don't see it, but you know, or you see it, but you don't know where it's coming from. You see what it does. Yeah. And when we are born of the Spirit, you see the activity, mm -hmm. but you don't have to understand all of it because right. see, there's still Paul talks about the salvation as still being that of a mystery. We don't understand how this man on a cross dying. Yeah, you know, how, what all takes place there? How all does that transform and make the payment? You know, the payment is made without us seeing it, in other right. words. And he's saying, look, the wind blows wherever it wants to, wherever it wishes. You see the effect of it. Yeah. So you don't have to understand it all, but you have to be born again. See, somebody like Nicodemus, a thinker, a scholar, he's going to try to figure out every little detail that Jesus is talking about. And he says he doesn't have to. Now let's talk about that last reference that Jesus makes about the serpent. Do you remember what he's talking about? Um, I know that there was a plague. Yes. Um, well, a snake. D well, yeah, during Moses' yeah. day. And they had, yeah, the snakes had bit the people. And they, uh, Moses was told that if he would raise up this bronze pole, pole that With would look like on. a serpent on it, that if the people would look at that, right, they would be healed. Because it's not just looking at it. No. It's actually having faith right. that the healing power would be in that right. idol, so yeah. to speak. So when they would look at it and believe it, then they were healed. Yeah. Yes, Jesus, I mean, excuse me, God was punishing the children of Israel because of, uh, of rebellion. And uh, they, these poisonous snakes were biting them and they were dying. But he... he fixed this serpent, and held it up. 
Now, we don't know if it actually looked like a cross, but it is interesting to think about the fact that when we talk about medicine today, that's a symbol of medicine, the serpent right. on a bronze pole. Nevertheless, but we have that, and Jesus is saying that he will be lifted up, and it's not just looking at the one on the cross. Right. It's having faith and believing that right. he cleanses you from your sin that gives you eternal life and spares you from damnation. Yeah. So we've got a lot of pictures there. I like the last one too about light and darkness. We'll talk just for a second. We, you know, born again, we kind of covered flesh and the spirit again. He's really comparing two things. You're born of the flesh. Then you're born of the spirit. It's important that the people who are adhering to the law realize there was a second birth that came about from the Spirit. We talked about the wind. You don't have to understand everything about how it works. Just have the knowledge to know that it has an effect when you come to the saving grace of Christ. And light and darkness. It's so beautiful how Jesus paints the picture that men's deeds are truly in their heart wicked and in and among themselves. And they are afraid to come into the light. Jesus talks about how they'll only have the light with them for a little while. And you and I also can only live in the light for a little while. Let's not keep our deeds secret or in secret. Let's bring them before the Lord. If they are wrongful, let us ask for forgiveness. Let's repent of them. And let's let him see us in the depths of our souls and expose that which needs to be exposed. Anything else you want to say? No, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we're continuing our study of the 10 most important Bible stories this Sunday. We're on number four, so we invite you to be with us this Sunday at 10 o'clock. We'll live stream about 10, 15. Got a new song the praise team's going to try out, and I wonder what the lesson will be on this. I wonder what number four will be. Let's just say it's a long epic, and uh, there are four books that are about it, but we won't say any more than that. Hey, we need to say hello to some people. All right. Let's see. Let me get here at the beginning. Now, come on. You, you don't get rusty on me because you missed last week. <laughs> hello, Ralph and Teresa. Hey, Ralph and Teresa. Good to hear from you guys. Uh, hello to Charles and Betty. Hey, Charles and Betty. So glad you could join us. Hello to Bonnie and Jamie. Hey, Bonnie and Jamie. Good to hear from y'all. Hello to Troy, and I'm going to go ahead and say Wendy. We'll say Wendy. Good to have you guys with us. Hello to Don and Brenda. Hey, Don and Brenda. Good to hear from you. Hello to Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. She had a birthday recently. Oh, that's right. Happy birthday. Um, hello to Helen. Hi, Helen. Good to hear from you. Hello to Jan. Hey, Jan. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, hello to Denise and maybe we'll say Fred. I think Fred's doing a game tonight. Hi, Denise oh, okay. and hi, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. Hello to Ann. Hey, Ann. Thanks for joining us. And hello to Tony. Hey, Tony. Boy, what a great crowd that we had tonight. If you haven't hello. said hello yet, say hi to us. And we'll try to say hello to you before we stop the live stream. But thanks Sounds so much good. for being with us. Let's have a word of prayer. And I'm so glad, again, my co-host is back. Thank you for uh, doing a great job tonight and bringing in more viewers than ever. You always do. Let's pray that uh, God will guide us and lead us in the week ahead, that we will understand and be able to share with others what it truly means to be born again, not in what we say, but in the way that we act. May we affect the world the way that the wind affects the world. Lord, we thank you so much for this day and the opportunity to look into your word. We praise you, Lord, for the good news of Christ. We thank you for this writing, and we pray that we will apply it to our lives so that the world might be changed through what lives in us. Let us not be trusting in who we are or who we were as the Jews were sometimes that was manifest by uh, what we see in the Pharisees and particularly in Nicodemus before he learned the truth. Lord, let us seek you out in the day as, again, Jesus might even have uh, nudged a little bit at this Pharisee by saying, you know, why didn't you come during the day? Why do you come at night when men's deeds can't be seen? Lord, let our deeds be open to you. Let the sun shine on them. Help us to confess our sins, to live in a spirit and state of repentance and be your children. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, thank you for joining us tonight. Anyone else to say hello to? I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we hope to see you on Sunday. If we don't see you in church itself, hope you'll join us around 1015 for our live stream. God bless everyone. Have a great night.